What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of break from the vlogs because I have something super exciting to tell y'all about that I think will really help you elevate your content in 2022. If you are not already, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Marika. I am a photographer, I am a new mom, and I love helping content creators elevate their content. So today I'm gonna show you guys how I level up my graphics in my YouTube videos using, drum roll please, Canva. So everybody asks all the time, how did you do that in your video? How did you make your graphics? How did you do that? That's so cool. What program do you use? Girl, I use Canva. I, although I'm a photographer, I am not savvy to Photoshop. I don't even use Photoshop. I use Lightroom to edit my photos and I think because I'm a photographer, everybody assumes like, oh, she's probably using Photoshop or she's probably using Adobe or she's probably using something expensive. Nope, I use Canva. I use what works for me no matter the expertise level and I feel like Canva does a really good job of helping creators create really good graphics, really good Insta story graphics, YouTube graphics, thumbnails for your YouTube, whatever the case may be, you can do all of that in Canva, which they are not sponsoring this video. I just feel like y'all need to know this information. First things first, if you have never used Canva before, I would recommend that you go in and get yourself familiar with it. You're able to make all types of things in Canva, such as presentations, PDFs, Facebook posts, document posts, a logo, whatever the case may be. But today we're gonna be focusing on the presentation mode of Canva or the presentation dimensions because that dimension is the same as a YouTube video so the presentation dimensions is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels which is the same dimensions of like your YouTube thumbnails or your YouTube videos so we'll be focusing on that throughout this video so you guys can know how to make your intros outros animations for any talking points and how to get creative and make your graphics stand out so let's get started so the first thing you want to do when you open up canva is to go in and upload your branding if you don't have an established branding such as colors and fonts i recommend that you do so um, in the beginning because it'll make creating your thumbnails and all your animations so much easier you're not having to look around for fonts each time you edit a video or look around for fonts each time that you are creating your thumbnails if you go ahead and decide a font that you want to work for your brand it'll make it so much easier because once you write out the text all you do is click your font and bam it's done you're not searching each and every time so the first thing I recommend is to establish your branding if you're looking for fonts outside of the ones that Canva offers I would recommend that you go to creative market I absolutely love creative market it's like the Etsy of design stuff. Like if you're looking for fonts, if you're looking for eBooks, if you're looking for anything like that, that's the place to go. You can buy the fonts for the right licensing, whether it's personal use or commercial use, you can buy the right licensing so you can make sure that you're good legally to use it for your brand if you're creating digital products or anything of that sort. So first go there. Second, set your colors. So if you're looking for somewhere to go to find inspiration for your colors i would recommend checking out pinterest if you're not um familiar with color theory or colors that work together as far as branding and advertising goes so go to pinterest look up color palettes for branding go through those see which ones you like and you can mix and match colors and once you have the ones that you like go ahead and upload those fonts and those colors to canva canva also has an area within it where you can see what fonts work well together if you use some super cute curly font as like your header you can't also use that font when you're typing out captions because that's not gonna be a font that people find easy to read when you're writing out long posts or something like that so I recommend that you check out that article that they have in there where it tells you what font families work well together so now that we have your branding established in Canva. Now we can get started creating the animations and the graphics. So the first thing you want to create when you are filming a video is your intro. Your intro is super important because it's like the first 
first five to 10 seconds of a video that grabs people's attention. The reason why we're not creating the thumbnail first is because you have to edit the video to see what portions of the video might work as a thumbnail. I feel like people may tend to do the thumbnail first before they do the video but I encourage you to go ahead and edit the video first because you can pull inspiration from the video to create your thumbnail so we're gonna work on the intro so with the intro in Canva we're gonna start a presentation mode once you open up presentation mode in Canva I recommend that you go through their pre-made templates Canva has amazing templates that they already make for you if you're somebody who's not on the artsy side or the creative side or you don't know how to start from scratch canva already has pre-made templates for you so i would recommend starting there and you can just change the colors to your branding colors so it can match your brand so go through those and pull inspiration that's what i like to do i'll open up a few of the templates that i see like i might see for example when i did my book video of the books that i want to read this year i wanted pieces of a page on my animations so what I did was I opened up a few of the templates and then I searched through their elements for paper. So you can search the elements for any and everything and that's really what's going to help your intro stand out. What I recommend that you do is once you got the feel or the theme for your video, what you're going to do is write out your title and then think of some elements that go with that title. So when I did my book club video, I wanted pages, I wanted book covers, and I wanted some movement. So what I did was on each slide, I put three different books um, and then I made sure to move around the pieces of paper on each slide this is why that's important because in canva they have a animate button and so you can animate the graphic and download it as a movie file so once I downloaded the presentation as a movie every time the pages changed the graphics moved around because I moved them around on each page that is what's gonna help your intro stand out come alive and grab people's attention and make sure you get creative with the intro you don't have to do it like me you can do it however you want but I think the animation feature is really what takes your intro up a notch and all your graphics up a notch in your YouTube videos and it makes it look more professional because people are thinking like dang how does she get all those pieces to move when really you just animated a slideshow but anything that works is what works once you have your intro next we're going to move on to your talking points or your call outs so if you're doing a sit down talking video like myself you want to animate each point in the video so every time that we move on to another point in the video a graphic is going to pop up this is going to keep your readers attention and also let the readers know when we've moved on to another talking point i really like that especially if you're educating your audience if they're taking notes or if you are using i forgot what it's called but on youtube you can make a annotation to where each part of the video you're talking about something else that'll also let your audience know when the next point is starting if they move throughout the video if they're like fast forwarding to the part that they want when that graphic pops up it lets them know like hey we're on to this talking point so what you're going to do is the same theme that you created your intro with we're going to continue it throughout the video this is going to make creating your graphics so much easier because you're not starting from scratch now you've already set the tone of how you want your video to look with the intro so we're just going to continue it all throughout the end so what I like to do is I like to copy the same page uh, from the intro copy it and then I just like to make sure I keep the colors keep the theme but change something up a little bit so I might change like the background color you don't want to change it up too much you want it to be cohesive um, so what I like to do is copy one page and just change the colors up a little bit, move some things around, and then write out what the talking point is. So for example, on my book club video, the intro was like green and like it was popping out at you and it you know, kind of went with the music. And then when I called out the book that I wanted to read, the page was more simple, more clean, but it still had the same theme as the intro video so you you still knew you were watching the same video it wasn't completely crazy so you don't want to go too crazy changing up things with each animation you want it to be a family you want it to be cohesive those are my tips for talking videos talking videos you can take over the full page the full screen like hey this is what i'm talking about next 
take over the screen with the talking point. But with a vlog, you're kind of moving. You're kind of going, going about your life. Vlogs are more fast paced. Vlogs are more like behind the scenes and you're on the go. So what I recommend doing is creating a graphic or word um, to call out whatever you're saying. So for example, I like to make sure people are aware of what my Instagram name is and what my book club page is. And so what I like to do is I will create a graphic in Canva and just remove the background so that it's transparent. So when it pops up on the screen, it's not taking over the whole screen because I'm sure I'm still going about my day talking and I still want you guys to see what I'm doing, what I'm saying, but I just wanna kinda like pop something up like, hey, make sure you follow me on Instagram because right now in this portion of the video, I'm talking about my book club. So make sure you check out my book club. So I would recommend creating a graphic and then taking out the background. So in Canva, you are able to download a PNG file and take the background out. And so that is how you can insert it into your editor of choice. I use Final Cut Pro and then have it like pop up on the screen or whatever. Animation, so I've already kind of touched on this point, but the way to really make these things stand out is to use the animations feature in Canva. The animations feature in Canva is so cool because they have different types of transitions and they have different ways that these items can pop up on the screen. And if you wanna keep it simple, you can just animate the entire presentation with the same animation or you can pick certain items to pop up on the screen differently than other items. So for example, in my postpartum Q&A video, the introduction that I had was all the little question boxes coming up on the screen. And then me and my daughter came up on the screen in a different way. And so I think that's a really cool way to kind of switch things up is to play around with the animations. Again, don't get too crazy. Don't animate every little thing because then stuff gonna be jumping all off the screen and it's not gonna be like smooth and cool. It's just gonna be chaotic. So to keep things simple, you can just choose one animation for the whole page and then let Canva do the magic. All right, now that we've done the intro and outro, if you want them to match, you can use the same theme that you did for the intro on the outro, but I recommend just having a consistent outro that's the same for all videos. You don't have to alternate your outros for each video. I think that can stay consistent throughout all the videos. Um, however, now that you've made the intro, wrote out your talking points, and you've animated the video, now it's time to do the thumbnail. So what I like to do is if I'm doing a vlog, I like to kind of um, skim through the video and see what parts of the vlog will stand out and leaves me enough room to put words as a thumbnail. Cause the key to a thumbnail is, in my opinion, or what I'm learning. Let's say that, what I'm learning because this is the first year that I have been this consistent on YouTube. Words, if you put words on your thumbnail, they need to be in a place where people can legibly read them even on their phone like because people watch youtube on their phone and on their tvs i know i watch it on my tv so if i'm scrolling through looking for a video to watch if there's words on it i need it to stand out i don't need to be looking like okay she put words on the thumbnail but i don't know what the words say i'm gonna just move on to the next video so what i like to do is when it's a vlog i like to go through the video and try to find like a really good scene in the video that i can download as a picture once i find that scene i download it as a picture upload it to canva and because my branding and everything is already established in canva i just write out the title or the catchphrase or whatever i want to grab the person's attention i just write it out and place it on the photo where it's legible so that's a that's one simple way to do it so let's say you skim through your video and there's literally no scene that works as a thumbnail that is when photos come into play so what I like to do um, is I try to make sure I have photos whether it's selfies or whether it's professional photos that I've taken and I use those as a thumbnail when it comes to photos this is where it'll help you out a lot. Make sure you're shooting your photos wide enough where you have room to add graphics or add words or whatever um, inside the thumbnail. Cause in the thumbnail, it's like you only have so much room to get your point across. So you wanna make sure you have that area or that the photo is clear enough 
and has enough room for you to put the words. A third creative way to do it is to just make it a cool graphic. So that's what I did for my six months postpartum update. What I did was I used the intro as my thumbnail and so I didn't have to create a whole new one. So you can also use the animations that you've already created for your intro or whatever as one of your thumbnails if you don't wanna start from scratch. One thing I would recommend if you are creating a graphic and you still wanna put yourself in the graphic, take one of the photos and remove the background. Canva has a feature where you can remove the background from photos as well, so only you just stand out. And what I like to do, in Canva, you can add a glow to your photo. And really what that does is it outlines the entire picture. So if you're wondering how to put the white border around a cutout of yourself, that is how you do it. You add the glow effect to your photo and you just change the glow to whatever color you want. So that way you can stand out from the rest of the graphic. You can also add shadow if you really wanna pop. Um, this is where you can get really creative. So now that you have your intro, animations, and your thumbnail, this is where people stop. This is where people quit. This is where people are like, okay, I'm done. I uploaded my video, we are good to go. You are not done because the people on Instagram don't know that you uploaded the video. And how are you gonna tell them? We're gonna make a graphic for Instagram. So, what I love to do is whenever I upload a video, I like to announce that, hey, I have a video up. So, in order to do that, you need to create an Instagram graphic. And I really recommend that you have this and you make it cohesive with your branding colors, but you don't have to let it match the video. Because the reason why is because you can just plug and play the picture every time you upload a new video. So make a graphic for Instagram using your branding colors. You can keep it super simple. Um, Canva has these picture frames where you can use a phone or a MacBook or a TV screen or whatever. So what I like to do, I like to use the MacBook um, frame. And then once I have made my thumbnail, I just go ahead and plug the thumbnail into that video. And I just ha have new video live go watch now so what i like to do is change the color sometimes every time i use this graphic just because people get used to a certain theme oh my daughter's waking up but i'm almost done with this video <laughs> all right my daughter woke up from her nap so she's gonna join us for the end of the video um but what i was saying was go ahead and make you an instagram announcement graphic like hey guys i have a new video up and then throughout the week kind of make a different graphic that says hey my video went up this is what um the viewers are saying just to grab people's attention and bring them back to the video i think where people give up is just uploading but you have to also push your content. You have to also share your content to different platforms and let people know like, hey, I just uploaded on YouTube this week. Don't assume that just because you push the button that people are gonna see it. You just have to push your content out. So those are my tips for elevating your graphics on YouTube um, and making them stand out using Canva. A lot of people have always asked me what graphics am I using or how do I create them? This is how I do it. So let me know if this was helpful for you. If you're using Canva or if the tips that I shared today helped you with Canva, comment them down below. Um, if you have tips for anybody um, when they use Canva, make sure you leave them in the comments so people can read them or check them out. As always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you subscribe and I will see you guys next Monday. Bye!